Good evening. I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and tonight is part one of a two-part special about our new show called Unfiltered. Now, when I say it's our new show, I mean it's yours and mine, because tonight I'm asking you to be a part of my team. Your job will be to choose the topics I cover each night. For example, if you want me to interview Donald Trump, no problem. Not only will I invite him on the show, but I'll ask him the questions you send me. Or even better, I'll invite you on and you ask the Donald the questions yourself. And if you want me to do a report on Obama's wasteful spending, I'll do it. If you want segments with colonels and generals discussing how to destroy ISIS or how to prevent China from hacking into the Pentagon, consider it done. If you want me to put pressure on the VA because veterans deserve the very best care, believe me, I'll have your back. And if you'd like to appear on the show to discuss welfare, immigration, jobs, racism, guns, foreign policy, whatever, you are invited. Bottom line is this, you and me and everyone here at Newsmax TV will be broadcasting the single best, hardest hitting, entertaining, educational program designed to serve the American people. And Unfiltered will be reaching everyone. Right now, Newsmax TV reaches 42 million homes, and it's growing each day. And we also stream online in real time on NewsmaxTV.com. So make no mistake, this show will go far and wide. And as a team, we will ruffle many feathers, and it's going to make a difference. Now, before I explain how it all works, it's important for me to show you the events that led us to this night. So get ready, because it's all unfiltered. It all started on September 11, 2001, when 19 Islamic terrorists changed America forever. I was at the bottom of those buildings, and I watched my fellow Americans beg for help. Whites, blacks, Latinos, Asians, young people, old people, I watched them all jump from 80 stories high. How in heaven's name did America allow that day to happen? That's the question I asked myself as I stood there crying, and then suddenly, the unimaginable happened. I ran for my life. Later that day, I was alone on the 32nd floor of my fancy office on Park Avenue. I was covered from head to toe with gray soot. And as I looked out the window and I saw the smoke bellowing from a gaping hole in the city skyline, I made a promise. A promise to the victims and their families. I made a promise to my country, to my God and to myself. The promise was this, and the promise remains, I will never forget. On September 12th, I said farewell to the boardrooms and bankers of New York, and hello to the bright lights and movie stars of Hollywood. My first documentary was a little film about finding one's purpose in life, mainly mine, and it starred Christy Brinkley, Billy Joel, and Alec Baldwin. Don't care for him very much. But anyway, each day on my way to making the film, I would drive past this guy. He's a protester who stands by himself on the corner of a 7-Eleven store. He holds a flag and a sign, and people either honk and cheer for him, or they toss hot coffee and flash him the middle finger. Now, across the street from this guy stood 200 illegal aliens seeking work from contractors and homeowners. And day after day, I saw this unfold. And then finally, one day, I decided to stop. We are the most givenest country in the world. We give to everybody. We protect everybody. We go broke on this goddamn world. And yet, as soon as you speak up and say, I'm hurting, these guys don't deserve to be here. They don't deserve to be taking American jobs. All of a sudden, I'm a racist. And that's just not going to cut it. Where are all these guys going right now? They go over to the Southampton Soup and Tire right there. That lady, she feeds them. She gives them clothes. She gives them food. And there's American taxpayer citizens that are dying out here. Ain't got a pot to pee in. Wait, they're all going over there right they're now? They're all going over there right now, yeah. Like a scheduled time? Oh, order. yeah, every day she does it. Every day. I don't care how much of a go do-gooder she thinks she is. She's breaking the law. She's, she's perpetuating all of this. The McDonald's was doing it, too. 7-Eleven, they got an order of protection against me just for protesting out on the sidewalk. 
I can't even go into 7-Eleven. These guys are breaking the law. It's not right here. Everybody just keeps letting them do it, too, and I don't understand how. I don't understand why. Now, before I met that guy, I knew nothing about illegal immigration. I didn't think it affected me. In fact, I was one of those people who bought into the idea that illegal aliens come here just because they want a better life. I had no idea how it impacted my taxes. No idea it crushed the American worker. And I was clueless about how it impacts national security. Looking back now, knowing what I know, if I have to pass blame on someone, it's the mainstream media because they failed to tell me the real story. I had 25 taxpaying American citizens working for me. The builders that used to hire me and my guys come up here to get the cheap labor mm -hmm. and they cut me right out of the picture. Right. Now my taxpaying American citizens aren't paying the bills anymore. Who's paying the bills? These guys? They get their checks and they send it back home. Mm -hmm. They're building brand new houses at home and we get stuck with the bill. They're using our yeah, services in this I country. don't know if that's really the, they the use truth. Our I, don't, I don't have proof of that. You think so. these guys... 40 people to a house, they're paying the right taxes. When 10 kids are coming from one house, they're only paying one tax bill. How is that, how is that helping our country out? The protester's name is Tom Waddell. He's been punched, spit on, stabbed, and shot at. Even so, he says he is not leaving that corner until every illegal alien is deported. He's been protesting every day for nine years straight. And like clockwork, he will be there tomorrow morning. Because it is just a bunch of greedy son of a guns trying to make out for themselves, trying to do better for themselves. They're not looking out for this country, and that's wrong. It's country first, and everybody else's wallet second, you know? We got guys dying for us right now in Iraq and Afghanistan. How dare we just let these guys take our citizenship as if they got it out of a Cracker Jacks box? Let me tell you how that guy changed my life. In film school, they teach you one golden rule. If and when someone asks what's your next film all about, you better have an answer. If you don't have a next film, say something. And so when Christy Brinkley asked me in front of a packed theater, hey Dennis, what's your next film? I suddenly found myself inspired by Tom Waddell. Starting tomorrow, actually, we're doing a project on the cost of illegal immigration. And it's not from a Republican side, it's not from a Democrat side, it's from the side of where you sit at your television and say, what the hell is going on? The next morning, I started the production of They Come to America, The Cost of Illegal Immigration. And here's the kicker. Before I started the film, I got my news and did my research like most Americans do. I relied on CBS, NBC, and ABC News. If I went on cable, it was CNN. If I went online, it was CNN.com. And so in making the film, I quickly learned that the reports and commentary offered by the mainstream media did not match what I found in the field. For example, the mainstream media sells the idea that most illegal aliens want to pay taxes. They want to live the American dream. But rarely, if ever, did I hear such a thing. If you were given, if I was to snap my fingers and you were legal, so pretend like you're legal, okay? Do any of you ever plan to go home and have full-time residence in your home country, or do you think you're here for good? I have a plan. You have a plan? <laughs> yes. I don't want to make children here in this country, so I want to make money in this country and return to my, to my country. So then truth is, you really do not want to be an American? No. Honestly. I love the honesty. Why don't you want to be an American? Because the uh, United States is not, is not the, the best in the world, you know? The humanity change. Tomorrow, today, you pay for me. Tomorrow, my son, pay for your son. Uh, actually, I don't feel fear if that for me. I mean, I've been here for 10 years. And uh, if I don't get the papers or not, I mean, I'm, I'm okay now. So, so All my family is in Mexico, so and somehow they would do me a favor. Like your close family, is your close family here or in Ecuador? In, in Ecuador. Now, do you send money home to them? So I'm sending money so every every weekend for my mother. How much money do you want to save to go home? Maybe six, sixty thousand or sixty thousand. Yeah. Are you gonna buy a house? So yeah, I can I can buy a little house. Or, yeah. So if you go home at 31 years old to Ecuador with $60,000, will you ever have to come back? 
No. You're good forever. Yeah, you're good forever. You're good forever. I don't want to come back. You don't want to come back. No. There's a recent report out that says that the majority of Americans don't even have $500 saved in the bank. And this guy's talking about 60 grand cash. And then there's the politicians. For some reason, the media treats these guys like they're royalty. They never ask them the tough questions. And when they do, the politicians give these meaningless, empty answers. And as you'll see in this next clip from my film, both sides of the aisle are extremely guilty. Mr. Let me ask you a question about, about uh, illegal immigration. Do you have a solution for it? And if not, do you think you deserve to be governor? We have a candidate. Well, uh, I have a very strong position on immigration. And I have said that uh, I'm frustrated that the federal government hasn't taken action. We need comprehensive immigration reform. In What's your this solution? Country? Would you give me an opportunity to answer, sure, please? Uh, uh, what news organization are you from? Uh, I'm doing a documentary. Okay. Let's, let's, let's give him an opportunity. How does it feel when you come so on? You so you don't want to answer my question? Well, I would like to ask you more about illegal immigration, Ms. Sink. We're just trying to get these politicians to answer questions. They don't want to answer questions. She answered your question, sir. I got one yes, quick question. Okay. Yeah. Solution <laughs> to the problem of illegal immigration here in Florida. Yeah. And if you don't have one. Oh, I've got one. It takes longer than one second. We need to take everybody to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to Chad. I'd like to note that the Democrat, Miss Sink, had us escorted away by state troopers because we asked questions about immigration. But it gets worse. When we come back, I see the border for the first time in my life. You don't want to miss this one. What you're looking at right over there, right, those white buildings, they call it Los Corales. It is a cartel, drug cartel headquarters for distribution of drugs in this area. I will tell you, you go near there, you're dead.